Hi everybody, my name is Freddie Berrigan, my pronouns are they, them, theirs. I'm a junior at McAllister College where I study applied mathematics and statistics with a concentration in community and global health. Uh, today I'm talking about my experience as a research intern under Dr. Lauren Mills, Dr. Lindsay Williams, and Dr. Logan Spector at the University of Minnesota and our interest in the gene expression and clinical differences that arise by sex in various pediatric cancers. This presentation will mostly be a methodological review and then an application of those methods to pediatric neuroblastoma. So the black box of pediatric cancer uh, is a title in reference to the unclear etiologies in uh, a, a slew of pediatric cancers. Very rarely can we find a risk factor, um, and if it is, it's typically heredity. In the case of neuroblastoma, the only known risk factor is heredity. And really, the consensus reason and opinion on why that is, um, is that Pediatric cancers are typically due to the profound and rapid growth that kids go through in the beginning stages of their life. Um, and even though the causes are unclear, we still can observe a lot of survival disparities by sex in multiple cancers. In 2019, Lindsay and Logan both um, identified six cancers that had sex-based survival disparities, um, neuroblastoma being one of them. And so that kind of justified this precision medicine approach that looked at the genetic basis of those survival disparities. And really that kind of took from statistical genetics, epigenomics, epidemiology by itself. And um, more specifically in this project, we use things like PCA, hierarchical clustering, um, very quintessential machine learning stuff, some data science techniques. We performed a survival analysis, but it's not listed here because it was such a small component of the project. Um, and then um, we ultimately performed differential expression, which is the main focus of this presentation. So differential expression is essentially the comparison of a gene's expression value, let's say strength. Um, genes are not inherently strong, but um, a differential expression kind of compares the strength of a gene depending on your uh, depending on your categories. So um, you can only have a control and a test category. And we performed this differential expression in DSeq2, which is a package written by Michael Love. And essentially, we give it a data matrix that where every gene is a row and every sample is a column. And then DSeq2 um, basically checks, uh, basically fits a gener generalized linear model. Um, checking for observations of samples which are in one category and then observations of a gene which are in, in another category. And then we can essentially determine the log to fold change um, from this summation. But the important detail here is that this log to fold change um, is either negative or positive. And if it's negative, it's um, upregulated or downregulated in a different category, and the reverse is true for the positive case. So at this Venn diagram, the pink circle are males, and the uh, excuse me, and the teal circle are females. Um, upregulated genes are going to be in the the place where there's no intersection, so the just pink and the just teal, and then that would have multiple little um, log to fold changes. And overall, we'll be able to identify the genes which are expressed more in males and the genes which are expressed more in females. And so we apply this methodology to target um, to target data. And what target data is is essentially um, NIH and NCI uh, supported um, genomic data that is public to that is public to the world. And essentially, we applied it to five cancers. With reference to neuroblastoma, we had um, 150 samples and 60,483 genes in um, it for each sample. So really huge data set. And we hierarchically clustered using complete linkage. And this heat map is essentially telling us um, that in terms of variation with reference to genes, uh, we are seeing that a lot of females are um, kind of grouping together. And that's a really good sign for this survival-based difference at, um, in not, yeah, I mean, I, it is a good sign. It is a good sign for this survival-based difference because then we can identify the genes which are the ones that could um, be behind this uh, clustering. Uh, on the left side are all of the genes which, um, which are organized and um, ranked by their uh, variation and essentially um, the the key takeaway is that most of the variation isn't coming from uh, the sex-based genes really all of those little other colors aside from uh, pink and red are just normal genes that are differentially expressed by sex 
So then we performed a differential expression and we actually got uh, the results and we identified the genes which are um, upregulated in males and then downregulated in females. And that was a really good sign because now we can, you know, identify stuff with clarity and, and maybe maybe figure out why the, the survival disparity exists. Um, but when we filtered down to protein coding genes, um, we could only identify seven differentially expressed prote uh, pr protein coding genes, which are also statistically significant, which is really sad, but uh, an, uh, an expected um, outcome of sam uh, filtering down from 60,000 some genes to just 1,000. And ultimately, that's still a really great progress because this is a, a novel discovery. Um, and I want to switch back to this slide and let you know that even though we've kind of filtered down, there are still a lot of genes here which are um, statistically significant and differentially expressed that um, may not be protein coding genes but are just as important and are not sex-based chromosomes. So then we took this to a pan-cancer level of analysis, and ultimately, we found a lot of genes which were differentially expressed across the five cancers we studied. Um, this 33% are, are likely sex chromosomes, but we can kind of see a lot of similarities, at least within um, acute myeloid leukemia, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, and then other stuff like that. Um, and consistent with the butterfly plot, uh, we have filtered down to the point where there's nothing in, in, in terms of similarity for protein coding genes, which is sad, but ultimately we've kind of adapted this methodology to other cancers and other demographic factors um, that we're working on currently. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Um, these are my references. Uh, have a great day.